his dead eyes. Yeah, pretty good. Mm -hmm. There is a debate going on about how they did Luke Skywalker in The Mandalorian. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a deep fake of Luke Skywalker. We're going to show you how we do it. Literally asking, can we do better than a multi-billion dollar company called Disney? <laughs> <laughs> we might be able to. The hardest thing to do in visual effects is to create a digital human being from nothing. Now, spoiler alert, if you're watching The Mandalorian and you haven't finished season two, maybe stop watching this video. Okay, spoiler alert, over. Luke Skywalker showed up, pretty neat. Kinda had a lot of mixed reviews as to how it looked and a lot of contention as to how it was done because Disney has been very secret as to how they did it. Now, in VFX Artists React, we do a lot of critiques, but today we're going to put our money where our mouth is. We're gonna try to create our own version of Luke Skywalker. It's more realistic, more emotive, and more vibrant and lifelike than what Disney has created. We're gonna be doing a deep fake. What you're about to see is not really Tom Cruise. Someone took the computer and they made him say and do things he wouldn't say. Now watch, and remember, this is not Tom Cruise. Ready to rung the bell? Yeah. To get a little subscription plus action? Yeah. And I'm, I'm having the time of my life. That's such an honor. Oh, yeah. it's an honor and a privilege. <laughs> Don't forget that. Now I cannot overstate how big of a deal this is if we pull this off because it represents a fundamental shift in how visual effects are going to be done in the industry. We're reaching a point where AI and machine learning can potentially let anyone create a shot that has before just been impossible. So, come along for the ride. Let's see if we do it. All right guys, we have some important, very important business to discuss. Was Luke Skywalker deep faked in the final episode of The Mandalorian? There is a debate going on about how they did Luke Skywalker in The Mandalorian. I was fairly certain when I first saw it that it wasn't a deep fake, because it looked more to me like Moff Tarkin or Princess Leia from Rogue One. Very classic pipeline sort of CGI, rather than experimental one person doing it on YouTube deep fake style stuff. Now the thing is, to do it for a TV show for like a 10 second scene at the end of an episode is pretty nuts, because you'd have to make 3D models, you'd have to do face tracking, you'd have to do animation, like so much work would have to go into it. Did you know that Disney actually developed their own deepfake method and they released a whole technical paper and video about it? What they did for Luke there, it does look like there's some element of deepfakery going on. The challenge they were facing is that the person who is playing Luke in the actual shot that they have to film with the camera is not Mark Hamill. So they need to get Mark Hamill's performance, stick that onto that person's face. So I think they're dealing with like a double stack here. They have an actor who then either has a CG like 3D head or Mark Hamill's actual like face being tracked on top of that. And then you have a deep fake being applied on top of that. Now you're basically stuck with a double stepping kind of situation. And that's where I'm wondering if we could surpass them. You're literally asking, can we do better than a multi-billion dollar company called Disney? <laughs> <laughs> we might be able to. Step one, so we're gonna try to figure out how we can improve this shot. So little things we can look for here. The shadow of his hand pa passing across his face. Like, does it look defined or does it look blurry, right? The lighting is very soft and kind of an omnidirectional light. Compared to all the defined, sharp lighting in the rest of the scenes, it makes it kind of feel flat and washed out, almost like airbrushed in. How light interacts with stuff is what makes it feel real. So if we can be hitting that scene with a lot of directional light, we can really give things a sense of form and shape. We have flickering lights and moving light sources and all these things that can just really help us sell that this is a real thing. Look how light interacts with it. You can't do this easily if it was fake. Look for those dead eyes. Yeah, pretty mm -hmm. good. Your eyes never just drift. They always lock, lock, lock. But when he raises his head, his eyes just smoothly move up. Like, if you look at how his mouth moves, that feels like keyframe targets to me, doesn't that? A little bit. All these heads have very smooth movement. They're like, keyframed so smoothly. Got that S curve moving around. Whereas human heads, like, will, like, vigorously shake sometimes. And we have kind of erratic movements in our heads. Yeah. People's expressions are connected. Mm -hmm. Like, when I smile, this happens, this happens. You know, when I raise my eyebrows, my mouth twitches. The biggest takeaway from that scene is just how stiff the performance is. Period. I feel like they're very locked in in a box and they can't turn his head too much or have him make big expressions because they're probably worried about how realistic it's going to look. Now, if we can make our version of Luke emotive and give smiles and, you know, eyes that are vibrant and they look around, that's all going to really help sell that this is an actual character. Because as a visual effects artist, you know, one half of your job is actually constructing these elements that's going to go into a shot. But the other part is all the little tricks that are going to sell it as real. It's classic visual trickery. If we can do all that, we can make a better Luke Skywalker. We're going to use artificial intelligence. We're going to use machine learning. We're going to be doing a deep fake. The deep fake's going to let us put a Luke Skywalker mask on an actor. It's basically a computer practicing to be a portraiture artist. 
<laughs> you know, it's looking at somebody's face and it kind of paints a version of it. Yeah, it looks kind of blurry and weird. But if it practices it over and over and over and retains its memory as to what worked, well, then you end up with a computer that can draw somebody's face pretty well. And the magic of a deep fake comes from a computer learning to draw one person's face and another person's face, and then you switch the wires. The nice thing about a deep fake is all the stuff I talked about, motion, lighting, expression, even perspective, you get all that without having to build out 3D models and deal with all the crazy physics simulations you need to do to get a face to look realistic. The way we're gonna make the deep fake is well documented. You can look up tutorials online. We're just going to be doing the same thing. Now we have a couple tricks of our sleep. First, an NVIDIA 3090 GPU. Incredibly fast, incredibly powerful, a lot of VRAM so you can get some nice higher resolution deep fakes. Puget Systems has been building us workstations here at Corridor, and that's gonna be our go-to machine for making this deep fake. It's gonna let us get to a higher quality version of Luke Skywalker, with higher resolution, in a shorter amount of time than any other computer here in this office. You're going to be seeing a cutting edge deep fake here. So the key ingredient for a deep fake when you're drawing a face is you need to feed the computer examples of the face. We need to inform the computer on how to draw Luke Skywalker. So really the only version of Luke Skywalker we can use is the one that we see in Return of the Jedi. So I'm going to enlist Peter here, be my teammate, and together we're going to try to gather as many high quality pictures of Luke Skywalker as possible. Every angle, every pose, and every lighting condition. Return of the Jedi was released in the 80s. It was still shot on film, which can be great quality, and some of these shots are great quality, but a lot of them are just blurry as hell, and that's causing problems because the images you feed in is the kind of image you're gonna get out. Then we're gonna have a blurry deep fake. And so right now I'm trying to use these different AI sharpening tools, and some of them are giving some wacky results. Oh my gosh. Here's AI sharpened blue. Ugh. So it's just scary. We've gone and we found a bunch of pictures of Luke Skywalker, but now we need to find our actor who's going to wear the deep fake. Who's going to play our Luke Skywalker? Because all the deep fake is, is a mask. Everything else, we gotta do for real still. The closer we can get to someone that looks like Mark Hamill from Return of the Jedi, the better. Can I volunteer? I don't want any part of this. Wait, it's Bean! Luke? But I was gonna go to Tashi Station to pick up some power converters. Uh, there he is. There he is. Oh, I've been waiting my whole life for this moment. <laughs> Dean has the exact same chin. By the time we're done with you, they won't even recognize you. Man, I was hoping to be a Jedi. Oh yeah, dude, I probably look the most like Baby Yoda. It's between you and Sam, I don't know. <laughs> Well, we found our Luke Skywalker. It was Dean Hughes all along. Who would have thought? So now we know it's Dean, we need to capture pictures of Dean so the computer can practice recreating Dean's face. Because remember, it's about being able to look at and draw Dean's face, look at and draw Luke's face, and then cross the wires in the middle. We're gonna film Dean under a bunch of lighting conditions, making a bunch of expressions from a bunch of different angles. I definitely have enough data to start this training. This is actually great. This is like a lot of really good like lighting samples. So now we have our Dean images and we have our Luke Skywalker images and the computer is training on those. Practicing drawing Dean, practicing drawing Luke, and it's practicing drawing Luke on Dean. But this takes time and it totally depends on the quality of the pictures that we have. So it's imperative that we have this deepfake running as much as possible. I estimate to get this trained on a 3090 is still probably going to take us about 10 days, maybe a little bit less. Everything needs to be set up to be running all weekend because we can't afford to lose that time. Man, look at this. Look at this. Dean. Dean, you're, you're starting to turn into Mark Hamill, man. Look at you. Don't look at that one. The most we can do right now is just step back and let it run. Oh, hey. I don't know if you know this, but the guys are at the studio right now and they're doing something that has to do with The Mandalorian season two. Now, I haven't seen it yet and I don't wanna know anything about it. So I've been holed up here in my attic with one purpose and one purpose only. Raid Shadow Legends, courtesy of today's sponsor. That's right. One thing we like to do around here at Corridor is play a little Dungeons and Dragons. And if you like Dungeons and Dragons and you like mobile games, well, then you might also like Raid Shadow Legends too. The thing that I like the best about it is that you can pick and choose how you want to play the game. They have everything from straight up arena battles to campaigns to dungeon battles where you can team up with friends and actually go in with your buddies. You don't need to wait on anybody to play, but you can also play with people whenever you want. Another thing you can do is summon different champions and level them up as you play the game. Now the fastest way to level up a champion is through farming a campaign. You grind XP and get loads of silver at the same time. Picking and choosing champions is some of the most fun that I have in the game and I got, I got, hey, hey little buddy, what? 
Look at that guy right there. I mean, he's one of the champions right there. You could pick him, you could level him up, you could put him in an arena battle, you could put him in a campaign, it doesn't matter, because Raid Shadow Legends has it all. That's right, they've got fights with noble knights and dark wizards. They've got tough bosses. They've got millions of players. And best of all, they've got years of content and regular updates, so that whenever you jump on and play the game, whether you download it now, or whether you download it six months ago, there will always be something new for you. Recently, Raid's developers rolled out the biggest update ever the Doom Tower. That's right, it's a giant tower with 120 floors, a bunch of secret challenge rooms, and 12 seriously badass bosses to take on. So if you're interested, now is a really good time to try Raid Shadow Legends. Yeah, what do you think? You think that's good? I, I, I don't know what to do with that. Do you live up here? Do you live up here? So if you're interested, hit the link in the description to redeem your free Void Champion, an XP booster, 50 gems, some energy refills, and an ancient shard. Also, check out this Champion Bulwark you'll get for free. It'll be a huge help probably in the Doom Tower. Get on that right now. Anyway, look at the time. It's time to get back to work. I think the guys have passed through this Mandalorian spoilers phase. I'm gonna check in with them. The coast is clear from here. Hey, Good honey. Job. Yeah. Are you Mandalorian? They deep fake Luke Skywalker, did you know? Damn it! We've been talking a lot about what we're going to try to create here. We're going to try to redo the scene in The Mandalorian. Now you may have seen like other deepfakes online where they deepfake that scene, but they're just putting a deepfake on top of the scene that already exists. But in this case, we're starting from scratch. We're going to have our own actor, their own hair and makeup, on a blue screen with our own CG background. The entire thing is going to be us. So what we learned with our Tom Cruise deepfake is that performance, posture, body language, all these things, your hair, those all matter. So Dean is not an actor, but he loves Star Wars. So I try to get my hair like a little more Lukey. Luke all right, I'm George Lucas. I want to see you walk into this room and I want to see you take your hood off with a gravity toss. Okay. Yeah. Dean needs to be the puppet master driving the expression. You know, if Dean's smiling in a way that Luke Skywalker never smiles, because Mark Hamill doesn't smile that way, it doesn't matter how good the deepfake is, mm -hmm. it's not gonna match. We're gonna go comb his hair, make this happen. If we pull this off, we got our shot. All right, we're about to start filming our shots. We're gonna film it on a green screen. We're setting up all the lighting, like all the ways I talked about how I can bring this to life. We're gonna get Dean in costume, and we're gonna put him in the scene, and we're gonna realize his lifelong dream. Dude, bring, bring your child to work day. I made a whole shot list of all the lines, how I want to do a performance around them. We've been working on some effects with the lights to like simulate sparks and things like that. You know, at this point, we just gotta shoot it and see what happens. All right, all mysterious. You just came into the smoke. Action. Has it occurred to you that Mark Hamill himself might actually see this? That might be the best moment of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Dean is more of a puppet master than he is an actor right now. He needs to puppeteer our deep fake. So for him to puppeteer effectively, he needs to move his face like Mark Hamill does. All right, good work. Nice work. Good acting, Dean. Got everything we need right on this guy. Uh, it was the best day of my life. So just gonna go back to work. Well Nico, can I, keep, can I keep the costume on? You can keep the costume on. The shoot with Dean went great. It worked far better than I had any like hope for it to work. The green lightsaber on his face, the flickering sparks, it all worked. And it's really cool, but we have a bunch of problems. Oh man, look at that! Look at that! Look at that, look at that. Look at that lighting. Look at that lifelike, natural Luke expression. Look at these dreams being realized. <laughs> Luke's hair is definitely puffier though. Luke's got the helmet thing going on. If we need to shoot it again with the wig, it's gonna be, it's not a big deal. Dean's neck is longer, his jaw's a little bit wider, his shoulders are a little bit more slouched, and Dean's eyebrows are a little bit lower to his eyes. So once you put Luke Skywalker on him, it looks like Luke's doing this the whole time, and he's just walking around with a neutral, like, frown expression. And there's no way we could have known any of this until we did it. We clearly need to go back and reshoot it again, but we have a lot more knowledge about what's going to make this look realistic. So we need to get the hair right. The hair is not working. We need to get the posture right, we need to get the body type right, but the lighting, mwah. I'm gonna do more of that. We're taking the shot to the next level. Today, Jordan went and got us some wigs. That's right, that wasn't my real hair. Could you tell? <laughs> hey, this is what we need to use if we ever wanna do a Nico fake. Is this freaking anchor man, dude? <laughs> yeah, it's the background looks really good. It's too wavy. This, this part- is too short on the side. This part is not yeah. right. Yeah. 
This is not gonna work. I'm telling you, dude. Oh, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> the color's not that big of a deal. We can always alter the color. Uh, George is coming. I can literally show him this picture in that wig. I'm like, dude, can you cut this in that hairstyle? Yeah. Absolutely. Is that the wig right there? Yeah, that's the wig. All right. We're looking for something like this. Okay. Totally by coincidence, today we were doing haircuts before work started anyway because a lot of the dudes wanted haircuts because they haven't had them in a long time. So George is actually gonna help out and cut the wig into the closest Luke Skywalker style he can. Close, very close. The colors loom me a little tricky, but. He needs to put on some mass, and I think the only way to do that is to just have him do some pull ups, and then we'll stuff him with some rags and stuff. But I think you gotta like get the base layer until failure, until failure. Is this look bigger? <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let's put on the full cut. So it, does, it does shorten my neck a little bit. Yeah, it does. We haven't locked it in. I just wanna see if you wanna keep the cut off his neck. It's looking good. It looks awesome. The wig, huge help. It's not perfect, but it's way better. Dean's performance, much better. Much more lighting. We got his posture. He looks way more regal. And you know what? We padded up those shoulders. Either way, I'm really excited. But here's what we got to do now. The deep fake is doing its final, final, final little bit of training. We need to composite in CG backgrounds, which we are just like disregarding as a challenge. <laughs> like that's a challenge still. Pulling a good blue screen key and doing CG backgrounds is still hard. How's it going here? It's going really good. Dude, it's Friday. <laughs> this video is coming out on Sunday. And we're still working on it. The reason we're still working on it is because we have seen the potential and we are doing our best to make this as good as we possibly can. Dude, deep fix gotta be deeped. <laughs> We're doing our compositing, you know, taking our new Luke Skywalker and putting him on our new background that we've created. Like, I just took it for granted that we'd be able to, you know, have a 3D hallway behind Luke with like lights flickering and all that kind of stuff. Like, oh, we'll figure that out later. Cause you know, we've done that before. So Peter's just been cranking through that as fast as he can. Yeah, just taking the original shot from the Mandalorian, building out the geometry based on what was in that scene. I imported a frame from the show into this program called FSpy, which is super useful. You like specify some straight lines in the scene and then the software interprets that and gives you the exact camera position and you can just throw that into Blender and then you have the scene from the movie perfectly lined up with your 3D view. So then you can start dropping in blocks and panels and stuff and start lining it up so it matches perfectly. So what you gotta do for the Corridor Crew channel is to subscribe. If you don't subscribe, my voice will go back to being normal and I'll be very sad. But if you do subscribe, I'll continue talking like this forever. <laughs> If you're wondering why I'm even doing this, it's because I'm gonna make a video showing how many balloons would really be needed to lift the house from up. <laughs> Subscribe for that! I've been training on this deep fake for two weeks. We have almost a million iterations, meaning like Peter has looked at a face over and over a million times. You know, as we dialed this in here, you have to also match the colors of the film, you have to match the other shots. Like all the things that aren't deep fake related, just normal visual effects production related. And then there's a whole, does it look like Luke Skywalker thing. <laughs> We'll see if it paid off. I'm just, I just want to, like at this point I've been staring at it forever. So yeah, let's go get everybody. Hey guys, you want to see The Mandalorian, but with our version of Luke Skywalker? Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, 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 is it time? All right guys, uh, we've all been working super hard on this. I hope it's cool. We'll see, you guys tell me. <laughs> Are you a Jedi? I am. Come, little one. He doesn't want to go with you. He wants your permission. He is strong with the Force, but talent without training is nothing. May the Force be with you.
Okay, here we go. <laughs> I think you broke them. Nice. nice. Dean, cool. did we achieve your dreams? You know what's crazy about it is that like, it looks amazing, but there's like five and some shots, even like 10% Dean in there. Blue Skywalker is just 10% Dean. Mark Hamill, if you're watching this, you can have my body anytime. <laughs> <laughs> the sparks look pretty freaking sweet. And if you look closely, you actually see the highlights in the eyeballs move too. It's crazy. Yeah. The likeness is still not 100%, but it is way closer, way sharper, and it has way more emotion. Deepfix is definitely a viable way to bring old characters back to life. And if anybody's at Disney's watching this, like, it's like a very fancy uh, resume application right now. <laughs> We're all like kind of worn out. Like we've been running like full focus, not just today, but like this entire week. All right, deep fix, pretty cool. We've done other experiments with deep fix on the channel. You should check out fixing the worst VFX shot of all time. Keanu Reeves stops a robbery and the one we did with Tom Cruise, which is no longer accurate, but at the time we labeled it the best deep fake on the internet. <laughs> I wanna know what you guys think. Did we do better or worse? Was it more vibrant or was it really weird and kind of creepy? It's your guys' turn to be the VFX artist reacting in VFX Artist React, and we're on display here. So yeah, I'm gonna read all those comments. It's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, give us some breakdowns, give us some critiques. I wanna see it. Subscribe. <laughs>